Okay, looks like we are live with our new Facebook Facebook algorithms. Lots of changes, uh, but we are live. That looks like this. Okay, I'm pulling up the questions right now, guys. Welcome to your Thursday Tika class. Those of you who are still with me, hanging on. Ah, oh, I know it's crazy times. Um, this is why I'm pulling up the questions. I just kind of like to do a little bit of an intro. Um, and hold on, let me make sure I'm on, I'm on here while I'm talking. Um, a little intro, you know, I did Second Sunday. Hopefully uh, everyone got an opportunity to check that out. I went ahead and taught you guys the zero point healing. Hopefully you all got a chance to experience that, to feel it. It's a very, very valuable tool. Um, you know, that that is a you know $150 session right there that I taught you guys how to do. And you could facilitate that, right, in your communities if you wanted to teach people how to do that. I'm just looking to see if I'm live because it doesn't look like I am. Yep, yeah, I am. Yay. Okay, just wanted to make sure because uh, you can't, it doesn't look like it from this end. But uh, So second Sunday, if you haven't caught my, um, the world is in a timeout video that I did. We've been doing lots of fun happy hours. And we've just, for the happy hours, we're really just like just chatting, you know, just, just conversating about like what's going on, where people are in the world right now. It's nice to talk to people who are in like, different states and different countries and just kind of get like different types of feedback and, you know, see what the vibe is. Um, because, you know, we are kind of like locked down. And so we know what our vibe is in our town, in our city. And, and most of us, if we're doing the right thing, we're not watching the news. We're thinking for ourselves. We're feeling for ourselves. We're working on ourselves. And hopefully these questions that you guys are asking um, this week are, are more about you than, you know, the state of affairs. Because you know everything is in divine order. And every negative is a shortcut. And it takes a lot of chaos. And it takes a lot of um, throwing a big kink in the chain of the way things were in order for us to create change. The cool thing about what's happening right now is what I'm noticing from a collective perspective is people are returning back to their selves. They're letting go of, you know, the non-essentials because we have to. Um, the non-essentials were, you know, to me, non-essentials in an environment that is not well is what we use to build a mask. You know, even me, like, oh, I'm not getting my nails done this week or I'm not, you know, getting my pedicure or you know, I'm not getting my massage this week. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, do I or did I ever need any of those things? Absolutely not. No, never. Never did I once need any of it. Right. Um, it's nice. It's a want. It's a desire. But it 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 gets to the point where we live so fast that um, and, and, you know, maybe your thing is different. Maybe it's your hair. Maybe it's your, um, you know food that you buy, maybe it's you're going out, maybe it's, it's you know, crystals that you're buying all the time. You know, it, 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 we each, we all have those essentials that we were kind of like using for like an instant gratification tool to balance out the art of being busy. And now that those are kind of like removed from us, it's interesting to see like, at first we were kind of like, eh, and then we're like, mm, and then we're like, whatever. Like now we're just returning to children where we can make the best of what we've got which is us returning to our natural blueprints, which is like, if you remember being a kid or ever watching a kid or watching babies play, um, they literally, you can give them brand new toys and they'll go for the box, they'll go for the wrapping paper, they'll go for the remote control, you know? And, and when we look at our factory settings, as far as our, bi our bio computers, these, these supercomputers that we have here, they're really based in, in manifesting reality through creativity and invention not instant gratification of what someone else has invented. Because you'll notice that when we buy things or when we get things or retain things, it's nice for like a minute. And then, you know, unless it's a piece of art or it really moves our heart space, we're kind of like, okay, now what next can we create? What next can we do? Where else can we go? Right? And we're, we're, we're not really allowing ourselves to do that yet. Um, one thing that I said in Second Sunday that I really want to just amplify for a moment is that regardless of where you are in in how you break down how the universe works and fits you know the whole idea of this particular ascension is the christ consciousness which is all about the crystalline 
DNA activation and the light body returning and us moving from a higher level of consciousness, moving out of density and into a higher level of consciousness. That's what this is what the game is here we're playing. And in order for us to rise into our divine Christ consciousness, which is crystalline energy, we have to eliminate density within ourselves. We have to remove the emotional barriers, traps, the traumas, the false belief systems, the old outdated rooting, you know, ancestral stuff that we've got buried in our biochemistry and and really free ourselves from all things that are pushed or or, you know, given to us on our road that from an unconscious space we adapted and um, downloaded as our own. Right. So this whole journey is, is us going back to ourselves. And regardless of how you look at it, you know, if you're knee deep in conspiracy theories and you're really, you know, mad at sex trafficking that they're exposing right now and you're, you're you know, you're wondering what, you know, if we're going to get microchipped or you're wondering any of those things. What I would recommend is something that I'm, I'm adamant about in my teacher training group is that your eyes go on your own paper. And if it is not part of your pay grade to be a politician or to be in the government, then you actually really don't know what's going on. And it's going to be a waste of time and a waste of your vibrational zero point energy that you're in right now to be a part of that conspiracy. Because from the other side of the veil, that's all done. You guys have to understand something. When I'm teaching, and this has been for nine years now, when I'm teaching, I'm teaching from a place of completion that it's already done, that it's already finished. It's already on the other side. I'm never, ever going to join in with you in a problem that you're having because I don't see the problem. I see you already in the solution. I see you in the solution manifested the life that you want. So what I do as an intuitive, instead of looking at whatever psychic experience is right in front of you, which is not the one that I want you to look at, is I want to find the you that is complete, the you that is higher self, the you that is is where you want to be. And from that point, I'm going to measure mathematically where you are and I'm going to give you your answer or your session or your treatment or your whatever that I'm working with based upon your completion. Because if I look at you and I judge how far you have to go, I'm now quantum entangled in your problem. And a lot of my students get very triggered by me because I refuse to operate in the now pro program problem. It is not my job to be in the problem with you. It's like two of us diving into the water with no life vest. And as an intuitive, I can zero point in on where you are right now and it's not good. Or I can look at you complete and I can see it done and I can see that you got on the other side and I can see how you did it and I can see with what you used and from there I'm going to show you who and what in the path of least resistance that you will hear from me because if I told you yeah just do this and this and this you'd be like what because I do I do that all the time you're like you make it sound so easy Jess and I'm like it is it is it is this easy and if I say, you know, if I'm in a session with you and I say, okay, well, if you want to look at where you're over there, the fastest way to do that is to let go of that job or to ask for some help or to, you know, work on this particular trauma. And you're going, no, but that's not what I want to do. It's right now I want you to fix this problem. I'm like, yeah, but if I'm looking at you complete, I, I'm a biohacker, right? My job is to figure out how to biohack this journey so that I can get shortcuts, right? And I can get to the end result of happiness and mastery and all those things much quicker than, you know, banging my head against every experience and learning the hard way like I did the first 35 years of my life. You know, I learned the hard way. I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna biohack and I wanna biohack with you and I wanna help you. So that's really what this Q&A has always been about is about allowing me the opportunity to help you see, maybe not give you the answer that you want, but to see, show you and see that the operating basis of what you actually need to look at in order to, to quantum leap, in order to get to the other side. It's like, 
looking at this. And I will tell you guys, I don't care how many teachers you hire and how many certifications you take, no one is going to do this for you. No one. No practitioner can heal you. And you know, you're gonna go get cords cut, great. If you don't show up differently after those cords are cut, they're gonna grow right back together because energy does not die. It has to change form. And if it doesn't change form, it goes back to the way the pattern was bound. Very important. So I don't go around cutting all your car cords because I know you're not ready to give up that relationship. You're not ready to lower your pride and take responsibility in a certain situation. So I can cut your, I can cut your cord and you'll feel great for three days. Three days, that thing's growing back even thicker because you went into um, resistance of it. Okay, so I don't know where that tangent came, but it's there. Okay, so I'm gonna dive into your questions for the week. I'm sure they're all related to that spew of consciousness. All right, Tigris says, hey Jess, my question is about premenstrual syndrome that I try to heal in every possible way. My hormones drop so badly during that time that I become physically and emotionally disabled for a week before my period. I achieved some results with diet and healing modalities, but not enough. Can you see anything in my energy field that is that I'm not seeing, that is standing on my way of healing this? I would be grateful for your insight. Okay, so let's, let's look at this um, chemically, emotionally, and physically because it's important for you to see all three aspects of this. This is this is a serious thing. Like I've had several clients who have actually gone through this. Renee is one who has, I think, gotten on the other side of this. Um, and you could always reach out to her and, and get a chat with her too and how what she did. But I'm going to tell you first, let's look at this emotionally. Whenever you're having painful emotions in your um, in your reproductive organs, okay, there is trauma trauma around reproduction, nurturing, sexuality, okay? So what I want you to look at is is the the storyboard of your life, this life, this incarnation, okay? The storyboard of your life is it a is it a pain painful experience with your sexuality is it a painful experience with lack or too much nurturing lack of nurturing can cause major issues because what you are is actually in resistance of your body reproducing that's what pain is right it's a message saying something is out of balance here okay so it's whenever it's reproductive it is lack of nurturing or too much nurturing it's one extreme or the other okay you're over nurtured or under nurtured which i'm assuming looking at your timeline under nurtured and res like a lot of pain around that okay um then there is some there is some uh sexual guilt sh and shame there still that you clean up a lot of this but there is some underlying stuff there that hasn't been cleared out all the way. So when your body develops and goes through its moon phase of, of beginning to manifest and then, you know, the intention of manifesting the egg getting fertilized and then moving into a baby, right, which it doesn't get to do, your, your fertility system is danger, 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 danger. So why would our reproductive system be aching in danger what does reproduction represent okay what does that represent again you guys very important that if you would look at things like as metaphors okay like headache too much head pressure too much mind pressure too much thinking too much out of balance thought and action too much chatter too much weight on our head right it's like every little thing we can we can chop it down to a metaphor and when we have these extremely painful periods it is actually a tantrum against our stories okay like i am having an inside tantrum about my nurturing my reproduction my sexuality okay usually i can find the reproductive issues in the uterus linked with mom okay mom 
dad, more mom, same with breast tissue, nurturing, right? So bloating is inflammation, pain is inflammation. There's some deep seated unprocessed anger sitting in there at the emotional position. And when your body goes into its moon cycle, it triggers that PTSD, okay? So let's look at chemically what's happening. Chemically, the body starts to move into its natural phase and danger signals, fight or flight, inflammation is created. Therefore, hormones, right? Hormones are created by what? The thoughts, the thoughts that are coming up from the feelings inside your body. Your body is generating these thoughts. It's producing these hormones. The hormones are fight, flight, attack, pain, squeezing, right? So now what what should be a natural unfolding, a natural unlayering, a natural allowing becomes rigid, resistant, and very, very inflamed and painful. Okay. So the it's it's kind of like um it's kind of like you have to you guys all have to understand that energy comes first, then emotion right energy emotion right the energy attracts the story the story attracts the emotion the emotion then tracks the thoughts the thoughts then create the hormones the hormones tell the body who it is the hormones that's why it's like you see a spider over there and all of a sudden your body's itching Ooh. you created a hormone to tell your body there's a danger and it needs to protect itself and now you have the ebgs so the hormones are there so what happens is usually a week before your body is preparing and it goes into full blown PTSD. Now, I'm looking, if I wanna really get deep here, to me, this looks like a very pissed off, pissed off little child inside of you. And I'm saying very angry, very, very angry. Probably an anger that you don't even know exists inside of you that is so deep, deep, deep down in your unconscious that you've numbed out because it wasn't appropriate. It wasn't your nature. It wasn't who you are, right? But it's in there and it's demonstrating its rage during your cycle. Now, you guys have to understand us women, we also, when we go through our menstrual cycles, we tap into the collective menstrual cycle we tap into the global menstrual cycle we tap into ancestry of being a woman we tap into our bloodlines of being a woman so we have like 20 different ptsds resurrecting every time we have our period this is why you guys usually pack your shit and throw chocolate at us right so it's like this is a restimulation of not just your story but all women's stories and like attracts like so your unprocessed unfelt communication with your emotions taps you into the unprocessed unfelt emotions of women okay so now you've got that so chemically you've got these uh, hormones now that are spinning out of control and it's causing the body to have major feels and you're having major feels and you're probably very disoriented and it's very hard to control because pain is one of those things that requires all of your focus when it hurts. It's like all you can think about. Completely identify with this. So physical, emotional, chemical. So the physical body obviously is going to be demonstrated in, you know, lots of negative thinking, lots of lack thinking, lots of, you know, blame thinking, lots of trouble thinking and it's not necessarily something you're thinking it's something that your body is in resonance of so the thinking is thinking the thinking is thinking the body and the body is thinking the thoughts and you're just sitting and going this sucks and i've tried energy work and i've tried to clean out my body so obviously there's three different ways that you can kind of attack this and take full responsibility for it because you know 50 percent of this you didn't create it's just a vibrational match to the women of the world who are also feeling this that you get to feel with them every month because you're matching it with your body like i don't feel that so i don't feel like i don't even know mine's coming anymore i used to i used to have exactly what you had now it's like oh shoot there it is but 
is I'm not connected to any collective except my own and I've healed that stuff inside of me. So therefore I'm not connecting to other collectives. It's almost like when you're, when you're not afraid and then you get around someone who's afraid and then all of a sudden you get around more people that are afraid. Now you're all afraid and now you're all in a collective of fear, right? Which is like what the news does. It breeds fear. Right. Okay. So having a woman, being a woman, we have a vibration of, um, you know, abuse, of neglect, of, you know, slavery. Like it's all in there. It's all in there. And if your body is a match to that, your body will feel the collective pain as well. You guys all have to take into consideration this. If you have fear, you're also tapping into the collective fear. If you have pain, you're also tapping into collective pain. So it doubles down for you because you're an empath. It's worse for you. Solution. What can we do for solutions? Let me see. Let me ask your higher self. Okay, so first, I know you've done diet, but you need to, you need to be consistent with your diet, okay? Also, diet is not the only food, guys. Diet is not your only food. People, you are social creatures. There are people in your reality that are super toxic to you that you may not see a lot, but your in vibrational, your in vibrational as, um, entanglement with at least I could see two people in your timeline right now. There's two people that need to get to step in, okay? And I know that's harsh, but you need to change the dynamic of your relationship with two people, okay? Um, one of them is most definitely divine feminine, all right? The other one, you know who I'm talking about, okay? So people are major PTSD activators. They're like, they're the ones who trip, they're tri they trip the time bomb, okay? Because they're influencing you, right? And food is definitely a way to get a hold on this, like definitely changing your diet. And I always say, go to the extreme when you're very, when you're chronically ill. When you're chronically ill, which I would consider this a chronic illness because it happens to you every month. You probably have like one or two weeks of like feeling like you and the rest is not. You have to be consistent, okay? And you have to be an extremist. Now to me, the two extremes for duality on the planet for food is raw vegan or keto. That's extreme, raw vegan or keto, which is a pile of meat and a pot, good meat, good meat, and a pile of vegetables and lots and lots of fat, okay? That's going to, based on your body type. Now, I'm going to say that because the world is playing in duality, there are going to be two distinct types of bodies that can go one extreme or the other to bring back to the balance point of health. So people who are like, you have to go vegan. Um, not everybody can do that. You know, we're not all from the same star systems. So our food requirements, although need to be extreme when we're under, when we're healing illness, they have to be extreme and they have to be consistent and they have to be on point. Okay. Um, and in both parties. So for keto, intermediate fasting okay vegan fasting like 24 hour fasting or water fasting so depending on what your body type is um i'm not going to tell you which one you are because you already know which one you are um it, and i'm going to tell you right now consistency with the diet is great but if you don't get the toxic entanglement with these one to two people um and you know one of them is yourself OK, one of them is you. All right. Um, you know, you 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 know what you're doing to yourself. And if you're going, I don't know what I'm doing to myself. Imagine that there's a child inside of you. OK, the things that you do, the things that you don't do, the things you allow, the things you allow other people to do to you, the things you do not say, the things you say to yourself. Would you say or subject those things to a child? That's your answer. OK. And then there's one person that needs to get some uh learn some new boundaries from you in your life so physical emotional chemical okay lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of clean water for you flush 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 
you need minerals to rebalance what you're losing okay because you're losing a lot so some some good mineral water for you um or mineralized water um lots of fruit enzymes for you fruit enzymes like squeezed lemon squeezed juices like the pulp actually having the pulp in in there and if you're doing keto obviously you're not going to do a ton of oranges but you could do a lot of lemons and limes because they're really glow, low glycemics um skins of the fruits skins of the um roasted vegetables are very good for you okay and reproductive anything anything any of those reproductive teas those balancing teas those herbs there's tons of essential oils that you can use but see i wouldn't do it when you're in the post manifestational awareness like you need to start this like a week before the symptoms start for you okay so you just, and it will probably just if you get really balanced and get this person this new relationship with yourself and this other person change this relationship with this other person get your diet consistent 30 days one full cycle you'll start to feel the breakening and the leveling up okay of that all right okay i know that's not fun at all my heart goes to you 